begin. Journey to Gilded Vale. Oh, those are the stones now. And the word I was looking for were stone hedges. I thought they were stone hedges, but they are clearly not. The caravan master finishes addressing the group, his bushy red mustache and sagging jowls quivering as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. He nods toward a looming black mass on the hillside. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling types who'd be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. Mm -hmm. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Tonight, everybody stays put, and in the morning, we'll get the path cleared. Gilded Vale's less than a day out. Understood? Last caravan master turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. Touch of the rumbling rot, could be. There's a stinging beetle around here, <coughs> carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. In which case, you'll be dead in a day. A lot of liquids. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink. Called a springberry. About the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might mm. check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. I know you want to hunt before it gets much scare darker. Scare me up some water. Let's see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. Adama looks over his shoulder at his assistant, a lanky, intense man named Sparfall. Carries an old sun bleached bow. Sparkle nods and slides the worn bow over his sh shoulder. Shoulder over his shoulder. Why am I having problems? Where would I find these berries? They grow on a bush that's common around here. Kind of funny looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. And these ruins? Nothing you won't see on half the hills of Air Glonfoth. Money to be made selling their knickknacks in Defiance Bay if you don't mind getting stuck with Glonfoth and arrows now and again. They didn't build them, but I'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear. Of course, all the ones around here have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn, so I hear. We can minimize that now. That minimize the time to pop up and pop up. He adds a wink, so I hear. Okay, we can just, uh, I'll go fetch the berries now, then. Hold on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot, not like most of this lot. But you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. He scans over the travelers, resting his eyes at a length, at length on a sturdy, armored, armor-clad woman who has spent the journey's night sleeping on uneven ground without blanket or pillow. Kalisha. Kalisha. Kalisha! The woman looks up on her own time. He needs to find some spring berries. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. No promises. What kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. Don't listen Free to guide. her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. He casts a sidelong glance at her. And I pay too well, if anything. Oh, Off with you. Okay. Aiden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a Beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. <sighs> okay, Odima's small grin recedes beneath his mustache, and he is stern once more. Okay. You heard the man. Oh. Let's get going before you keel over. Certainly. So, um, am I using a wand? Is I for inventory? I'm using a rod. So it's not a... I have to get close? What is this? I know that already. Okay, it's not a wand. I prefer wands. Okay, well... There's 
means I have to hit. Anyone need supplies? I've got sundries for sale. There was a character. That sold to a merchant. We're here. Here then. Trans it's transfixed, however, by a ragged tear in the seam of his tunic. Brought a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts for the road. Scratches one cheek with his knuckle. It's covered with uneven stubble, as if he hasn't quite gotten used to shaving on the road. I say, is there anything you need? I've got some basic traveling supplies for sale, if you'd like to take a look. Yeah. A rod. Rods are the largest of the magical implements and can be distinguished from wands and scepters by the heads of each on each end. Rods focus and release more soul energy than wands or scepters. Oh, this attribute makes their blows more powerful, but they recharge and fire more slowly. Hmm. Do you sell a wand? Stores allow you to trade and sell your items for. Oh, okay, I see. Minimize tutorial messages. Okay, I gotcha. Okay. this Sparkle, okay, we'll just leave him be. Some, some spring berries, okay. I think there was like a wolf or something to fight up here. Let's check by those outcroppings. Okay, perfect. Oh. Go. 
Certainly. Yes? This is it. People on the caravan say you've been getting into all kinds of deep conversations with them. What's your angle? Not really. The only one I talked to was the uh, merchant. I used to spend a lot of time reasoning about good and evil, right and wrong. It's part of my nature. I was a teacher before I came here. I don't believe in anything. And I've spent a lot of time challenging other people's beliefs. Uh, that isn't your business. Yeah? How is it you happen to come here? I came to put my theories into practice. I realized it was all just a tremendous waste of time. I was frustrated that there seemed to be no way to be able to prove any of it. Yeah. This one. I was frustrated that there was no way to prove it. Some things just aren't in the stars and there's no changing it. it makes you wonder if the gods like putting us in situations that can't be resolved. Uh, just to see what we do. Kalisha breathes in her surroundings. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been this way, but I always did like it. Lord Rhetoric's offer makes a girl think. I'll give him that. You here to settle like the rest of the lot? It's hard to... I haven't thought much about it. No harm in that. Might as well see the place first. You might have some other plan in mind for coming this way. Playing it by ear. <clears throat> Completely spontaneous, huh? Interesting. Well, there's probably no hurry to make up your mind. You've got an inn in Gilded Vale that'll put you up as long as you need, or so my sister tells me. Anyway, I'm wasting time here. Odemo, give me an earful. Let's be on our way. Tell me about you. I've got simple needs. I like open skies, far horizons find work that lets me live the way, live that way. My family wanders, too. We started in Direwood, but my parents ended up in the Living Lands. I've got a brother in Ruate, Ruate and another in Eider, Eider. My sister in Gilded Vale. She's the only real homebody. Kalisha sighs unevenly. Her eyes search the ground at her feet. My sister moved out here, sometimes back. She sent me a letter. She seemed worried, but that's how she always is. This time, though, she asked me to come out, and that's got me a little worried. I like that. I can scroll back up. I haven't seen her in ages. Been doing guide work in Iximato. Ixim but I do anything for her. She's, well, she's a much better woman than I. So I'm here, and we'll see. Okay. You know, I wouldn't hold my breath that Sparfell is getting your water anytime soon. He does what he feels like when he feels like it. We should check on him first. Slap him around a little. The stream's just down that way. Come on. Let's get your water. Oh, I know how that's going to end up. So, was I to... There's nothing here, huh? Quick save. Okay, good. Ah, right here. Just follow the sound of the river. Running or moving water. Okay, if you're ready. What a surprise. Sparful went hunting. At least he left the water skins. Come on. You crouch at the riverbank and dip your water skin into the cool water while Kalisha waits nearby, keeping watch. As you rise, you notice her look up sharply towards the tree line. You've gained a quest item. Out of the trees emerges Sparkle, one of the guides, barely discernible in the dim moonlight. He can no longer carry his bow, and there is a strangeness to his gaunt. 
His stride wobbly as he moves toward you with labored breathing. Sparful, are you all right? Kalisha frowns. Sparful's toe catches on a rock, and he collapses forward in a heap. A feathered shaft of an arrow planted between his shoulders like an enemy flag. Okay, so here we go. Ambush! Yeah. Okay, one enemy at a time. So he's almost dead. Oh shit, I didn't I meant to move myself. We have to, to, to contend with. Okay, I wasn't there where to compare. Okay. Here we go. Where is my speed? Hide armor is commonly worn by woodsmen, grandfather and explorers, and those who favor speed over protection. Hide armor is made of layers of soft leather. Though its construction often requires multiple layers to provide dependable protection, it does little to show its wear to slow its wear in combat. Though the climate is warm, it is less oppressively humid than the heat of Adair. Exomatel clothing is heavily layered using cotton and highly decorated wool in equal measure. Extensively, extensive beadwork is another defining feature of Exomatel garments, found both in jewelry and incorporated into the fabric itself. Enchant. Oh, okay. I can just hit that compare button. Okay, I think I'll favor that. Oh, man. That has more protection than this, and it's like less clothing, but okay, if you say so. So I have some damage reduction now. Okay, cool. Certainly. Oh? Corpse is cold to the touch, and a ripe smell wafts from it in putrid, in putrid waves. A dark, crusty bloodstain besmirches its 
simple linen clothing. Cool. Ooh. Stiffer and more durable than ordinary hide armor, leather armor is shaped and boiled in oil to achieve its distinctive finish and toughness. Leather armor is often chosen by adventurers who want a balance of protection and speed. Uh, you know what? What is enchant? Just this. Oh, okay. Yeah, why not? I like that look. What's this? Nothing? Oh, here I can use the arrow keys to Good, okay. Got a bow, so take care of him first. I think Kalisha is well affected. Excellent. button for the key for select all. Let's see. Oh, select all. Backspace. Okay. Oh, cool. Okay. They'll pick us off out here. We need to get to camp. All around you lie the massacred remains of the other travelers peppered with arrows and knife hilts. Uh, splayed and bug-eyed and filthy. Kalisha puts the back of her left hand to her mouth as if to ward off some poisonous vapor. A handful of dark figures stands above the fallen, trending on limbs and backs and heads, jerking their axes from their bodies as if from half-split logs, one of them towering and sever. 
severe, with a thick beard, tasseled with knots, holds a wet blade at the neck of a young man you recognize Yodan, the last of your caravan left standing. Lay down your arms, trespasser. Do not forfeit this man's life, for a fight you will lose. Why have you done this, or... through. I don't know what they did. Okay. okay. I think my lore is a little bit higher because of the, you know, one of the options I picked when creating my character, so let's see if I'm successful at this. Your words carry no weight when I have seen the truth with my own eyes. Blood must be paid for this intrusion. So I say again, lay down your arms. Judging by the string of animal teeth around your neck, I am guessing you are worshippers of Galloway. Galloway told you to stop protecting the ruins, would you? Hmm. I am guessing you are worshippers of Galloway. Galloway told you to stop protecting the ruins. I, I was successful with that the last time. I'll go with that. The man frowns and motions as if to swing his axe. He then winces, but the blow never comes. Instead, the man cocks his head, intrigued. Of course, but he would not. It is by our, our command of all the gods that we accept this charge. How do you know? Because it's consistent with their beliefs, or because it's what you were told? The man glares. It has always been known to my people. I see. What of Galloway's etic? That weakness and age must be purged by youth and strength. I think Galloway would want some moldy, crumbling stones to survive long after their buildings have turned to dust? The man's nostrils flare as he fumes. He would not. He told us otherwise. I'm sure he did. Just not you personally. But why should that stop you from killing innocents? Distracted, a man's grip falters on his axe handle, and he nearly fumbles it, affording Hilden the moment he needs to dodge out of his swing, which comes too late. Howling with rage, the man charges you instead. Here we go. Oh boy. Okay, so. Can I go into my inventory? I can. Leather armor. Okay, these weapons are good. Go fast. Snake, right? Oh boy. She was interrupted. They are out for the fight. But as long as your side is victorious, they will regenerate their endurance when combat ends, even though endurance regenerates after combat. Health does not keep an eye on the bar to the left of the character's portrait to prevent him from being maimed or killed. Oh my god.
should be up now your enemy lies uh, supine on the ground unable to rise his companions now silent among the other dead his breath comes in wheezing fitful gasps he looks not at you but at the sky above forgive us barely audible beneath his choked sights choked sighs a whisper of wind stirs the air I remember this at this the man's eyes rolls back as he closes them good good the gods are just a queer smile crosses his face. I am ready. The wind begins to swell, whipping around the camp, electric and volatile, upending pots and rattling tents like an angry spirit. You can feel it begin to seep beneath your skin, and where it pierces you, it feels as though it is rendering you apart from within. Seated against a wagon wheel amidst the howling maelstrom, slashed across his chest and bowel, Odema's body stirs, and with great effort, he raises his saggy head sagging head his eyes barely open he looks directly at you get inside run okay oh, I can't take anything sure it would have been cool stuff to take oh, let's upgrade oh, I don't know if it's really upgrade but get a wand because uh, the quicker straining against a gale that threatens to pull you off to your feet with every step you set your hands in the worn, in the worn folds of weathered rock, and set about pulling yourself up the precipice. With a last burst of energy before your arms give out, you swing yourself up onto the ledge. He then trails behind, slowed by injury and delayed by his hesitation, by early hesitation. As he nears the face of the rocks, one of the fallen attackers, who had been feigning death, lunges for Hyoden, topples him onto the ground. Restrained, Huden lashes out against his fatigued assailant, but struggles to break his hold. They are close to you. From your position, you would have a good chance at hitting the mark. Uh-oh. Requirement not met. Oh, boy. Well, let's try this. Your aim is true, and the hit jars Huden loose. Lurching to his feet, Huden. Uh, clampers up the base of the rocks. As he nears the top, however, the wind flares, pulling him sideways and tearing one of his hands free. But diving out onto the rock, you manage to catch hold of it. Securing his hand, you pull with winning strength, and it feels as though your arms will be jerked from their sockets. They hold you just long enough for Hyoden to set his feet and join you on the trembling ledge. There is a deep resonance to the swelling wind now. You feel it in the rocks beneath your feet and inside a cavity of your own chest, as though it would shake the marrow from your bones. Each new guest, or each new gust, menaces the old stones before you, loosening connections, unsettling balances. As you dart beneath the old archway, the entire portal begins to fall beneath its own weight. All attacks are resisted by one of four defenses. Enemy is powerful against one type. Try and attack that. Was that? A Beowick. Had to be. Then we're lucky to be alive. And we're the only ones. We can't stay here. There could be another collapse. We're not getting out that way anyway. Let's get further inside. Our level of the ruins has been blocked off by falling rubble. That should be far enough. <sighs> but what now? This racism falls visibly with each breath. We look for another way out. Storm has to die sometime. So what was that out there? 
Kalusha shakes, shakes her head. Windstorm of a kind they only get in Ira Glanfarth. Not too many people live through them, so it's hard to know what's true. The Glanfarthen word is Beowick. To them, it's the gods' way of reaping the souls of the land that couldn't find their way out, their own way out. Uh, but they'll take a living soul as soon as one dies. Still got yours? All right, let's get going. I remember there was a chest or something to loot. Wonder who was here. See if they left anything useful behind. Oh uh, yeah. Good. 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 Okay, anything here? Cool. Okay, I know about the camping supply. Each time you rest, it uses up one camping supply and you can't rest without one. Um, well, I don't want to compare it. No, I want to compare it to me. Compared to the battle axe. Uh huh. Ooh. Ooh. I do like that. Oops, did I hit? Okay, so she's like a dual wielder. Try dual wielding that. So I have a have to have a book in one hand. Haven't had a need to use any spells yet. Okay. Look at the tiles. What are those symbols? They'll never know I'm here. I remember this. Yep. Trapped. Found something. Infected. Yeah. All this is trapped. Ooh, is this a door? Wow. Okay, let's get in a little bit. That roundish symbol. I'm pretty sure I saw it on one of the tiles back there. Aha. Uh -huh. Something like this, right? Be quiet. Ooh. A symbol of a pattern circle is inscribed on the pillar. An unlit brazier sits at its base. It could be lit if you had the means. Okay. So apparently I don't have the torch on me. So, can I do it now? I'll be quiet. Use a torch. Uh, let me 
examine all of them. Symbol of interwoven rings inscribed on unlit brazier sits. Does that say the same thing? Pattern circle. Okay, hold on. It's almost looking like... Oh! I get it. I believe I get it. So one... Here we go. There we are. All the different symbols. Okay. Uh, flames kindle swiftly in the brazier, winding their way upward. Okay, so that got rid of that. I should just light them all, right? Is that possible? Some kind of order to it. This is probably a simple puzzle, and there really isn't a... Um, I can just do it all. that.
Where'd that slime come from? Oh, it's coming from that. Be quiet. A vicious slick of something dark and tar-like runs down this wall. The shapes and bulges, the shapes and bulges in the ooze suggest that something lies beneath it, but you cannot tell what. Um, so will everyone get something different out of it? Okay, so it's the same. Yeah, I'll use my water skin. Why not? Uh, you rinse the ooze away, revealing an intricate relief of a man's face. The sunburn surrounding it has chipped away in places, but the details of his head, from the tight curls of hair to the ridges of his pointed ears and elf, still showcase remarkable craftsmanship. One eye socket is empty, a gem fills the other. You have lost item full water skin. Okay, so funny, so I, I should find the other gem, and I thought, I think the ooze had it, right? Ah, turquoise. Turquoise is an amorphous, semi-precious stone, opaque and blue or green in its general color, but often flecked with darker deposits. I have two of them. Okay, so it doesn't... So I probably didn't find it yet. Okay. So somewhere around here there is a gem. I'll come back to that. feel that there's a draft coming through that wall I don't hear any sign of that storm either so the danger has passed excellent Enchantment. 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 Okay, cool. Oh, shit. Okay, I should have been just sneaking. That's okay. Um, we'll have Yodin go over here. I will. Oh, 
Oh, is that spider gone? Backstab. Okay. Oh, Backstab them, but. Alrighty. I could scout ahead. See what's around uh, the corner. Yeah, please. I'll be quiet. Stab. I don't know if I'm really... I think Felicia... Ah, sneak attack. Okay, very good. I did get the sneak attack. <sighs> Excellent. Crack runs along this wall from floor to ceiling. A light gust of air passes through it. Oh, push on it. And the crack begins to spread. Finally, the ancient masonry excuse me, gives way. The wall crashes down, revealing a circular room ahead. Okay, let's go to it. I think this is like backwards to way I went the last time, right? Oh, too bad. Okay, well, fine. Start off with you. Another backstab. Some food. 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 Alrighty. Wait. Do you hear that? What? Here is the gem. So oh, this was, the, see the last time I came across that, that journal and now it makes sense. I didn't uh, explore it long enough. His small folio is torn in several places and blood has soaked into several of the sheets. Uh, one later uh, entry is still legible, however. I can't believe my luck. A few rounds of dice and I've got my hands on a genuine Iguathan artifact. The fellow who had it said it was a pretty nothing. As far as he's concerned, he's not willing to go digging in some ruins. But if he's right about the gem leading to a hidden treasure, then that's worth sneaking past a few painted elves. I'll head to Salantless in the morning, and then it's just a matter of finding this relief he was talking about. Hidden treasure. Yep. So that must be what that is. And, uh... 
part of the treasure. Well, part of it is this, but it will open up a bigger treasure. This brilliant blue gem uh, has been sculpted to look like an eye. So, could mean that he thought this was the treasure and now he's making his way out of there and he just never made it. Um, or maybe he knew that there was still more to it. I remember there was a, a kobold type creature here giving me problems. I wonder. Hmm? Oh, okay. A trembling, sickly creature emerges from the dark, clutching a spear. Who oh, is sick, maybe? Knobby elbows and thin ribs show through his scaly flesh. It does seem like it would be a kobold or a conian. Uh, but you recognize it as a Zorip. It watches you cautiously, breathing in ragged size. Gives colder meat to the creature. Raise your arms and stand still. It's okay, I won't hurt you. I'll tear you to pieces, lizard. Ah. This makes sense now, so I'll give him the meat. Maybe he's just hungry. He's nothing but skin and bone, right? You produce a piece of scolded meat from your pack and toss it to the floor. Let's hope it goes for it. The Zerub's nostrils flare at the scent of fresh meat, and its eyes dart between you and the food. It creeps toward the prize, shoving the spear into your grip and snatching the meat with both hands at the last moment. Its gullet quivers as it devours the flesh and noisy chomps. Hey! Hopefully we made a friend. You've gained an item. Oh, wow. Thank you for that. You have a spear now. Like that. Uh, 18 to 12. Well, I don't use a spear, but... Oh, wow. One-handed. Okay, okay. Plus five to accuracy. Speed is average. I wonder if I suffer any kind of penalty for dual wielding. I don't see anything, but... Okay, because this bypasses three points of damage resistance, I would think this does a little bit more. However, this does uh, 0.5 to critical damage multiplier. It's only 0.5 and it only affects crit damage. Okay, I'll stick with the mace and then use the spear. Alrighty, and what is this? Polax, slow, two-handed. Aha, aha. Polax, that's a different way to spell it. I've seen it spelled P-O-L-E before. Like in Diablo 2. Interrupt. Okay, so you can interrupt uh, people's attacks. Your versatile Polax is a powerful and flexible weapon that can deal devastating blows even against a fully armored opponent. Straight bladed axe head is is opposed by a hammer, allowing the wielder to switch between different damage types as circumstances require. Mm -hmm. That's why it does you know, slash and crush. Okay. But it's really not going to matter in that moment.
Okay, so that's back at the beginning. Okay, there's that again. Let's... Oh, I solved a little puzzle, so... Uh, oh, wait a minute. I rem it's, it is this way. Hold on, I remember. Some ultimate treasure. It was this way. Uh, so I solved a... Um, worked around a trap, and I'm about to get uh, some kind of ultimate treasure... Uh, in this room here behind that wall uh, and I got myself a spear from that uh, Azurip creature. Three things uh, that I did not accomplish last time so this is very cool. Uh, see this is why you don't um, I guess you don't uh, burn out on the game like first time you play it you know uh, and what I mean by that is, um, I mean, it's good to be, to be uh, very thorough when you play, you know, in, in searching. The last time I was just kind of, it was just a first impressions video, so I was just kind of going through it to get the feel for the game. But typically, this is how I do play. I would just kind of take my time. Uh, but what I mean is, um, like, I like to role play my character. So if it's, uh, especially with, like, Skyrim or Oblivion, if it's, like, maybe quests that... Uh, may not interest the kind of character that I am playing, uh, I may not do that kind of quest. Like mages, I'll stick to magely stuff. Knights have no interest in joining the mages guild. Uh, that way when you play it again, there's new stuff that you haven't discovered the last time. Instead of taking the one character and just uh, totally unearthing every secret. Um, I, well, it's okay to unearth secrets, but um, uh, I guess completing every quest, you know, just doing everything you can in the game in a one playthrough. And it, it, it defeats the purpose of uh, having multiple playthroughs with different kind of playstyles, different kind of characters, and you know, be able to role play it differently uh, is what I'm, I'm driving at. 